In this video, we will be solving inequalities in one variable and learning how to make sign charts to solve the problems. Let's start off by defining what is a polynomial inequality. An inequality is anything that is not an equality. So we have f of x is greater than 0, f of x is less than 0, f of x is greater than or equal to 0, f of x is less is sorry yeah less than or equal to zero and finally f of x is just plain old not equal to zero all of these are inequalities so let's start off and find where a polynomial is zero positive or negative so in this particular case we know that it's going to be zero when x is negative three and when x is 4, and that's a multiplicity two, of 2. Then to fi figure out when it is positive and negative, we're going to make what's called a sign chart. We start off by drawing a line, and we're going to fill in our zeros. So at x is equal to negative 3, and x is equal to 4, we have our zeros. If x is less than negative 3, let's say we have a negative 4, we're going to have a negative number here, so we're just going to deal with the first one. So we'll have a negative number for this factor when x is less than negative 3. If x is between negative 3 and 4, let's make it 0, uh, we have a positive and if x is greater than 4, we're still going to have a positive number. So now we'll look at this one. If x is less than negative 3, let's say we've got negative 4 minus 4. We're going to have a negative number squared. If x is between negative 3 and 4, let's again, we'll put a 0 in here, 0 minus 4, we end up again with a negative number. And because it's a multiplicity 2, it will be squared. And if x is greater than 4, let's put in 10. 10 minus 4 squared is going to be a positive number. And again, that's multiplicity 2. So in this section here, we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive times a negative. This will be a negative. Negative times negative is a positive times a positive will give us a positive. And all of this is positive, so that's positive. So f of x is going to be greater than 0 in the se middle section which is between negative 3 and 4, and the union of 4 to infinity. And f of x is going to be less than 0 from negative infinity up to negative 3. When you're solving these problems, you need to look at the question that's being asked. At the top of the page here, we have the same sign chart showing that it will be negative in this section, positive in this section, and positive in this section. So depending on what they're asking, it will determine what our answer is. So if we are asking where it's greater than 0, it would be between negative 3 and 4 union of 4 to infinity. If we're asking where it's greater than or equal to 0, then we will include the negative 3. It will also include the 4. If we're asking if it's less than 0, we're going from negative infinity up to 3. And if we want it less than or equal to 0, we've got negative infinity up to 3, it's including the 3 because, sorry, the negative 3, 
because it can be equal to zero and we also want just the number four and that's in a set by itself. And once you've solved the problem with your sign chart you need to look carefully and see what is being asked. Let's look at a similar problem when we have a rational function. So with a rational function we want to determine where we have our zeros. Our zeros will be when the x and the numerator is zero. Our zeros will be when x is equal to negative three and x is equal to five. It will be undefined when 5x minus 2 is equal to 0, so at x is equal to 2 fifths. And the positive and negative, we will make a sign chart. In this sign chart, our significant numbers are negative 3, 5, and 2 fifths. So negative 3 is when it's a 0, 5 is a 0, and 2 fifths is undefined. So for our, now with our sign chart we need to look at three different parts for the positive and negative. So x plus 3 is going to be negative below negative 3, positive between negative 3 and 2 fifths, positive between 2 fifths and 5, and positive at 5 and above and you can test that by plugging in any number. x minus 5 will be negative at negative infinity to negative 3. Between 3 and 2 fifths it'll still be negatives. Between 2 fifths and 5 it'll be negative. And above 5 is when we hit the positive. And in the denominator if we plug in a negative number less than negative 3, we will have a negative number. We'll have a negative number between 3 and 2 fifths. And then at 2 fifths, we're crossing over and we hit positive. And 5 and greater, we hit positive. So now we combine each one of these and look at the number of negatives to tell us when it's going to be positive. So for the answer for C, it will be positive. This section here, we have an odd number, will be negative. We have an even number of negatives, so our answer is positive. We have an odd number here, so our answer is negative. And we have an even number of negatives. We're only looking at the negatives. Zero is an even number, so this will be a positive. So we are going to be positive between negative 3 and 2 fifths. Positive is greater than 0, so we're not going to include the 3. And is also positive from 5 to infinity. It's going to be negative less than 0 from negative infinity to negative 3 and from 2 fifths to 5. Let's look at how to solve a polynomial inequality graphically, meaning we're going to use our graphing calculators. If we have this inequality, x cubed minus 6x squared is less than or equal to 2 minus x squared, first thing we want to do is to set it equal to 0. So we'll have x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. This is the inequality that we want to put into the graphing calculator as our function. So I've entered it into the calculator. Now I'll graph it. And on the graph, what we are looking for is the points that are it is less than or equal to zero. So using our calc button, we need to find our zeros at second and calc and finding the zeros. We have our first zero is 0.32, our second zero is 
is 1.46, and our third zero is 4.21. So now that we have our three zeros, we, we can write out our inequality. So our three zeros were 0 0.32, 1.46, and 4.21. So we're looking for when our inequality was less than or equal to zero. So that would be from negative infinity up to 0.32 and including 0.32 because it was equal to and then between 1.46 and 4.21 including 4.21 and after that stays positive. I want you to try this one, pause the video, and try this one, and then I'll come back and I'll give you the answers. So go ahead and pause it right now, work it out, and then see if you can come up with the same answers that I did. So here are the answers. R of x is 0 when x is negative 1. R of x is undefined when x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. So using those three values, we set up the sign chart with negative 3, negative 1, and 1 as the defining markers. And then using the three factors, determining if they are positive or negative in each section. And then counting the number of negatives. So in, in this case, we have 1, 2, 3 negatives, an odd number. So the answer will be negative. Here we have 2 negatives an even number, so the answer is positive, 1, so the answer is negative, and an even number of negatives, so the answer is positive. So it's going to be positive, the function r of x will be positive between negative 3 and 1, and from 1 to infinity, and it's going to be negative from negative infinity up to negative 3, and then between negative 1 and 1. We have one more example to look at, solving an inequality involving a radical. Because we have a radical, in this case, f of x will be undefined if x is less than negative 1. Because if it's less than negative 1, we will end up with a negative number under the radical, which by definition is not defined. It's okay to have negative 1 because the square root of 0 is 0. But anything greater than negative 1 will end up with a negative number and undefined. So our zeros here will be at negative 1. And looking at this one here, x equals 2. So we will have our sign chart. We need negative 1. And we need 2. And below negative 1 is going to be undefined. At 1, it's 0. And at 2, it's 0. Between negative 1 and 2, if we have, uh, let's say we put 0 here, 0 minus 2 is a negative number. So for this factor, it's going to be negative and then it crosses over and becomes positive at 2. By definition, this must always be positive. So between negative 1 and 2, we have 0 plus 1 gives us a positive, and anything greater than 2 is still a positive. So an odd number of negatives in this section makes it negative. An even number makes it positive. So depending on what we're being asked, here we're asking where is it less than or equal to 0. It's less than or equal to 0 on the interval between 1 and 2. And because of the equal, less than or equal to 0, it is including negative 1 and 2. And now, just for fun, sometimes you might need your toes. See you in class.